Go ahead. Hi folks, I am up here in beautiful Mansfield, Ohio. My buddy's Dave Shop. He is a fellow Tormach owner as well. I met him at our open house last year and then he came again this year and he saw that we were talking about getting an iron worker. And funny enough, Dave has the exact one that we're looking at. This is an Edwards 55 ton. I'm actually looking at a Cleveland Steel version, but Edwards makes it for Cleveland Steel and vice versa. Cleveland Steel makes all the tooling and punching for Edwards. So um, there's a couple things here. One, if you don't know what an iron worker is, I thought it'd be really cool to, to show off. I mean, these things are amazing. Uh, you basically you can punch here on the left. The center, you can shear both channel, or excuse me, angle and flat bar. And then the right is sort of an accessory station. Dave's got a uh, hydraulic press brake in there. But you can put a coper notcher in there, a rod shear. Um, 55 ton unit, super versatile. Uh, they're generally sort of more fab type machines. And that, and that in and of itself is quite useful. What I want to figure out is, you know, we do a lot of work machining flat bar aluminum and when you shear something you do deform the edge in fact we were we were experimenting this morning here kind of looking at what happens to the edge and you get some deformation on the bottom see that little part there and you also get a little bit on the sides so here and here so that's going to mess up if you have to put say this whole part into a jaw but some of the stuff that we run like our bridgeport power draw bar kits the part is longer than the jaw, so some side deformation won't necessarily hurt, and we clean up the ends anyway. So we'll start here with the sh some shearing and just show how freaking awesome these things are, and we'll take a look at the cut quality. Boom, just like that. So there's our piece, and we'll lay it back here. And you can kind of see. I'll take this back home and we'll measure up and see what that top deformation is. Um, honestly, it's not as bad as I thought. This is my first time ever playing with an iron worker in person. You can see some of the side stuff as well. And that'll focus here. Um, yeah, up there at the top. Uh, there you can see a good example of how how much it does to the to the edge as well So it definitely um, Takes a chunk out That burr is a result of using a worn part of the blade. Oh interesting you move over to a clean part of the blade Yeah, uh, you'll have a lot cleaner edge on the shear And so do you, do you think a new one's gonna wear out like that or did you put something hard in it at one point? Well, it's over the last seven Eight years, it's seen a lot of shearing because your original blades never got it. sharpened. So, and you can flip the blades or you just have to have them sharpened? Um, I think they're reversible. I think you can flip them. Got it. So let's that's pretty another, avoidable. Let's take another cut over on the other side of the blades sure. to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. You can see it's a guillotine type shearing, which is pretty common for how any kind of shear works. No. Nope. What, same thing? Same thing. A little bit at the end there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's funny, you can see the pocket. But again, th the question is, how does this compare to band sawing it or DeWalt uh, multi, uh, or DeWalt uh, sawing, cu saw cutting it? Um, we also have a, the folks from Geeka that make a really high end iron worker coincidentally are going near Zanesville tomorrow. So they they have a show truck with them. They're going to bring by their 55 ton Geeka and we're going to compare the shear edge to see how well it does. Um, do you mind? Hole punch. Yeah. Do you mind punching into something real quick? Can we punch that aluminum? Sure. Oh. So the red vertical piece is a stripper. That way when you, after you punch and you lift up, it strips the part off the punch. So what, what is this, one inch hole? Uh, seven eighths. Seven eighths hole. Boom. Boom. 
So a similar question here. Does it make sense if we have to do, say, 200 of a part to shear it to size, and then let's say we've got some one-inch holes. Does it make sense to punch them in approximately the right place, and then when we stick it in the machine, you're just doing a cleanup op. You know, does that improve the cycle time? Does that make sense? It's a really good punch. There isn't a lot of deformation around the sides. I'll take a closer look back at our shop, but uh, it's very curious to me. Um, same thing though with an angle shear. It shears angle like a champ, no problem at all. And then the press brake attachment over here just uses this bottom die for uh, 1 16th inch, 8th inch, uh, 3 16th, and then quarter inch. And again, this is kind of the open port. So you could take this out and put in other types of accessories. Boom, just like that. So pr pretty darn handy. We do some work bending two inch by quarter inch stuff. So, um, you know, this isn't gonna replace the need for a giant eight foot break, but boy, um, super, handle for, super handy for a lot of smaller fab work. And just to give you guys an idea, you know, the machine that we're looking at here, just round numbers, ballpark, just a little under 10 grand. So definitely a lot of money, but super uh, useful if you, if you get an idea for what it can do. Take a look at the rod shear, or the uh, angle shear. Boom, that's slick. And you know, for us, there's two, you're comparing this against two things, time and cost. You know, for cost, it's, it's uh, literally the cost of bandsaw blades and it's how long it takes. You know, is it quicker to shear a bunch of stuff here versus welding something together and bundle cutting it? So, hope you guys enjoyed that. We are going to also throw in the Geeka footage here and see how that turned out. So the folks from Geeka brought their truck by, which was perfect timing. And I'll be honest, I was really set on the Geeka before I saw it because I had just talked to a person who I really respect who had said, John, you're at the point in your time with your business where you need to be investing in the best equipment you can. And this is a very successful guy who is also frugal, but there's places to be frugal. And he was explaining, when you have a machine that's important to you, buy the best machine you can. And that's exactly what the Geeka is. It's, it's very high-end quality. And I was again thinking, okay, how much are we going to use this? Is it going to be just for the fabrication side or can we be prepping raw material for the machining side? So the folks from Geeka came. It wasn't, a, unfortunately, good to film. Uh, it just wasn't with their truck. Here's a, a photo of it. Really cool truck that had the uh, machine that we were looking at, the Hydrocrop 55 built in. And short version is not, not impressed, not interested. Uh, we passed. We actually bought the Cleveland Steel or the Edwards. Now, in fairness, the it's not totally apples and oranges. Here's a sort of zoomed in shot. The Geeka is a, is a beautiful machine. It's 60 tons versus 55, so a little bit more power. Um, the biggest thing I liked was you had built-in uh, round bar and square bar sh shear, and you had, this could get pulled out and put in a channel shear. And there's some stuff we do with channel where a channel shear would be really helpful. Um, the other big difference, just to be clear, is that this is a two work or two um, unit, what do you call it, two piston units. So one, one guy can be using the punch over here while this strokes independently. The one that we bought, um, when you activate the stroke, everything on the machine is moving. So it's really only one worker at a time. Um, but here's the thing. I wasn't impressed with the shearing. It in fact was no different. We'll go look at some samples than the Edwards that I saw. Now, it just wasn't. Maybe you know a demo unit's been used a lot, but guess what? Iron workers get used a lot. These are machines that should last a long time. Um, and if they weren't smart enough to sharpen their blades or keep them dressed, then oh, oh well, that's their loss. It was double the price. You know, this unit they quoted me, I think, at about nineteen thousand dollars. And that's a double the amount of money, and it's it's a different threshold for us. We absolutely will use this, but when I realized it's not going to work as well for prepping stuff on the machine shop side, 
and that's okay. But I was in, less interested in allocating that much money to it. I also just, I, you know, they, I wasn't just that impressed with the Geeka. Um, the one thing that jumped out to me is they, they showed, me, showed me the one inch square bar shear and I went to put a piece of one inch in it and it didn't fit and they were both, there was a sales rep guy there from Geeka and I think a distributor that would be the salesperson for us and they didn't know and I said, well, it's probably metric and they kind of looked at me dumbfounded and I'm thinking, wait a minute here guys, this machine is made in Spain. No one has brought this up with you. Like I'm the one figuring this out. I had a set of calipers, sure enough, to, uh, 25 millimeter and one inch is I believe 25.2. So I was just kind of like, really? No one has brought out a piece of one inch before and tried to shear it on this or, um, you know, how am I the one that's finding this out and you guys didn't know? If it had sheared beautifully, it would have been a totally different story, I'll be honest. The other drawback to the Geeka was their press brake would go back here and it's a weird style. Anyways, it was like the Edwards and that the um, that you just saw us bend on, but it was only four inches instead of eight or ten, and that's a big difference. And their response is they make one that sh has a full wide shear, but it would go up here where you want the punch. And my opinion on an iron worker uh, is that punching and shearing are its bread and butter. So I'm not taking the punch out. In fact, we make a product where right now we spot them in a fixture widen that punch out and then go over to our Whitney and punch them and this is going to do all that in one fell swoop with just a simple fixture template. Super excited to show you guys that when we uh, get the machine. It actually should come later this week. The last thing was Geek have talked about how Edwards are you know less quality machines that may not last very long and um, the response to that is I've got two guys I know that have used Edwards now or Cleveland Steels for a number of years and they've used them regularly and they're happy with them so it's American made, the quality's there. I absolutely admit, the Geeka may be something where in 30 years it's retained more of its value, but for us, it's not that type of a machine. And again, can't get there at all on the price. And then lastly, super excited to have an iron worker. I do wanna mention that some of the advice folks have given me is don't kid yourself. This isn't a substitute long-term for a proper break and a proper shear. We're not a sheet metal shop. You know, We do do some fabrication work. Uh, I've had my eye out for both a, a press break and a shear, but we're absolutely going to use this. Literally, I've got a whole bunch of iron, angle iron to cut uh, next week, which I'm hoping the machine is here for. So, almost forgot, I wanted to include our examples here. So, these are all shearing off the Edwards or Cleveland Steel, which is the one that we bought. And that's a, you know, that machine's been used quite a bit by Dave. We thought that there was um, some additional shearing distortion caused by a bad spot in the blade, but as you saw when we moved it, it still caused it, so I've got a lot to learn on that. What you can see though is that there's deformation on the top side of, I think this is actually, I recall it actually goes in the machine like this. Um, so there's deformation on the top side, on the front, and then on the bottom side on the back, and that has to do with the scissor or guillotine nature of it's putting up downward pressure here and upward pressure right here but that hopefully gives you guys an idea of the edge quality there is some deformation um, along the side as well so if you put a straight edge up here you can kind of see it's a little bit tricky to show i think this is probably the better way to show it um, looking straight down on it you can see how it's bowed out there and again, that's not, I think the clearance between the shear blades can affect that, but it's, it's not the case that a high quality shear is not going to distort. I think that's just part of what, um, part of what shearing is. Same thing here, just another example. You can see what we get. Um, you can see from the video though, footage too, I mean, it is pretty darn cool how shearing works. It's literally pushing the material past its strength point. Um, Here's another one. So you guys get the idea. Um, here's a close-up look at that punched hole. Now, we on our Whitney punch have have found that it's much better internal hole quality. So I'll be really curious to see what we get um, when our punch comes. We also have to do one of the first projects as well is building a conveyor system, and we got a 716 hex punch so that we can run all these standard roller conveyors. Um, real quick, way better to punch those than to drill them or broach them or machine them. And then here's the, the Geeka. Here's the one inch round bar. 
Now, in fairness, I think steel will shear better than aluminum because aluminum is so soft and gummy. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. But um, that's pretty horrendous. You've got distortion all the way back almost an inch on the part. Let's look. I can do all this at once. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, seven eighths or so far back. Um, less so, well, you've even got some here as well. Here was a piece of aluminum. This is quarter or maybe five sixteenths. But you can see, actually, that's honestly worse than the Edwards right there. Um, it just is. At first, I thought, ooh, maybe there's less edge distortion. But when we looked, no, it was the same. And then here was a piece of one inch cold rolled steel. Now, this didn't fit in their one inch die. So we put it in the whatever metric equivalent of like one and a half. Um, so the looser your, your fit, the shittier your she shear is going to be. So I guess this could have been better, but on the flip side, the machine they're bringing around in the U.S. is somehow in metric, and they didn't even know it. Um, we did shear a piece of channel. That was pretty nice. I mean, again, this is, you know, an iron worker's for fabrication. I I'm sure some people are going to yell at me for even trying to think we could do CNC machine shop prep material with it. But, hey, um, uh, I've gotten to where I am by experimenting, and I think if I knew everything... As a as a young kid, say from the family business, I probably wouldn't have uh, I probably wouldn't have gotten into this. So sometimes, um, what do you say? Ignorance is a good thing. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. More to come when the machine shows up.